Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add new plants to player farming system. So to get started we're going to go to the player farming system, then to blueprints, then to the plants folder. And in here we've got all of the blueprints for the included plants and we've also got the master plant. Now you can either duplicate one of the included plants or you can right click the master plant and select create child blueprint class. But for this video I'm just going to be duplicating one of the existing ones as it's a little bit quicker and easier to follow. So we'll right click the tomato plant, I'm going to select duplicate, I'm just going to call this BP underscore bush and then we'll open that up. I'll just bring that over from my other monitor. Next we're going to go to the viewport and select the plant mesh and over in the details panel we're going to change the static mesh to whichever mesh you're using for your plant. For me I'm just going to be using the flat bush or flatland one and this is a bush from the realistic bush pack that I have available on the marketplace. And as a side note, the mesh that you set here is going to be the mesh that you actually see while we're trying to preview and place our plant during gameplay. Next, we've got the placement box, and this is essentially collision that checks are any axes overlapping the box. And if there is something overlapping the box, then the plant will not be allowed to place. So you're going to want to make this a little bit larger to or smaller to cover your plant specifically. I recommend that you keep it above the uh, bottom of your plant just by a little bit. This will stop it from interfering with any uh, landscape collision or anything like that. So something like this would be fine for a plant of this size. I might make it a little bit larger this way. But you can change the shape and the size of this box to fit your plant. You can also duplicate the uh, placement box and you can have multiple uh, collision boxes and it will check both of the boxes to make sure nothing's overlapping our plant while we're trying to place it. But for this plant, we just need the one, so I'm going to delete that one. The next thing we've got is the ground detect component. Now, essentially how this works is it will trace down from its current location. And if it hits something, it will consider that the ground and it will allow our plant to be placed. And this is what's used to stop us just being able to place uh, plants in the sky. Now, with the ground detect component, I always recommend that you have it slightly above the zero position. So you can see mine's at uh, 2.5. And then down here, we've got the direction category. You can see that the ground trace distance is set to five. So this means that the uh, ground detect component will do a trace five centimeters long. And as long as it hits something in that five centimeters, then the plant will be allowed to be placed. You can have multiple ground detect components and uh, we can just duplicate that so I can show you. You can have multiple ones. And the way that will work is both the ground detect components will have to hit something that they consider ground for the plant to be able to be placed. So if you have a bigger plant or you have a plant with multiple roots or something like that, you may wanna have multiple ground detect components. But for now, I'm just gonna delete that extra one. Next, we have the light and warmth detector. Now I recommend just setting these above your plant. So something like that, and then the same with the warmth detector as well. And these essentially are responsible for detecting if the plant is getting light and if the plant is receiving warmth. Now we've got some extra settings with the light detector. If you mouse over any of these settings, by the way, you'll get a tool tip that gives you a brief explanation of what they actually do. But essentially, if the detection type is set to advanced for your light detector, then it will check that the plant has a line of sight to your sun in your level. So that's your directional light. Um, if you change this to basic, all the light detector will do then is check, is there something directly above the plant that's gonna block sunlight? If there isn't, then the plant will receive its fun, uh, sunlight. And if there is something directly above the plant, then the plant won't receive any sunlight. And then to change how much light the plant will receive from the sun, you can change the directional light amount here. Currently it's set to 50, but if you wanted to, you could set it to say 100, for example. And if you have any issues with your light detect component not detecting your sun correctly, you can always enable this debug mode and that will actually show you where the trace is being drawn and it will also tell you the actor's names that are blocking that light trace. So now we've set up the essential components that allow our plant to be placed and detect light and warmth, we can actually start changing our plant component settings now. So we'll select our plant component here. And something you might want to do is just go to the cog here and do collapse all categories. That will just close everything for us and we can go straight to our plant settings here. Now, each one of these categories under the plant settings has information available in the documentation. And I go into depth about what each feature does there. I'm just going to be covering the basics of the things that you might want to change when you first set up a new plant. So getting started, we'll go to the growth category. 
Now, one of the main settings you'll probably want to change is the growth time. By default, it's set to 15, which is quite short. Um, that's just for demonstration purposes. But this is in seconds, and you can set it for however long you want. Next, we've got the stages. So if we go down, you'll find the stages category. Now, growth stages allow you to change the plant's mesh depending on how far through its growth it is. So you can see currently it's set to true because we duplicated the tomato plant. If we open up the growth stages and open up each one of these entries, you'll see that we have different meshes set and the growth value here determines when those meshes will be used. So at zero growth, we use the seedling mesh. Then at 40 growth, we switch the plant's mesh to tomato plant two. And then at 70 growth, we switch it again to tomato plant one. Now, if you wanna disable this system and just use one mesh for your plant, you can do that. You can just untick the use growth stages here and your plant will just use the mesh that you set for the plant mesh component. But if you do choose to use the growth stages, if you wanted to uh, add a new growth stage, you can just click this plus button here. I'll actually clear these out just to show you how this is done. So right now we have no growth stages. If we click the plus button, we get a new entry. We can set a mesh. So I'm gonna set this to my first flatland bush mesh. Then I'm gonna set the growth to just zero. So that will be used to begin with. Then we'll add another entry. We'll set this to flatland bush two. I'll set this to use say 50 growth value. So we'll use this mesh once the plant's at 50 growth. And then we'll add another entry and we'll set this to say uh, 80 growth. And when we hit 80 growth, I'm gonna use the flatland bush nine. Now you can use skeletal meshes instead. If you want to, you can just set them here and you can also set effects. So uh, say at 50 growth, when we switch over to this mesh, maybe I wanted to play a particle effect or a sound. I can add those here and the plant will actually uh, play the sound and the particle effect when this uh, growth stage is reached. So that's pretty much how the growth stages work. Again, if you just wanna use one mesh and you don't wanna bother with that system, you can just untick that, clear out the growth stages and that system won't be used now. But I actually want my plant to have those growth stages, so I'm just gonna undo that. So that's enabled again now. Now the next thing you might wanna look at is the growth effect. Now the way this works is it basically means that as the plant's growth value increases, the plant will actually slowly grow and increase its scale meaning that the plant will get larger as its growth value increases. Now, if you don't wanna use this system, you can just untick use growth effect and the plant won't change its scale as it grows. Next, we've got the grow effect start scale. Now, this is essentially how big the plant starts when we first place it. So setting it to 0.4 means that the plant will be about 60% smaller than it would normally be. And then it would slowly increase in size as it grows. Now the next setting is the growth effect rate. And if you mouse over that, it's got a pretty good example of what it does. But basically this is how many times the plant's growth scale will update per second. So 24 is actually a pretty high value. The reason it's set to that by default is for plants that are growing very quickly, you're gonna want this number to be a high value. So it updates its scale frequently. But for plants say that take half an hour or an hour to grow, you're just gonna to wanna to set this to a very low value like one or two because those plants don't need to update their growth scale as frequently. So that's pretty much it for the growth settings. If you wanna know more about these or you wanna find information later on, there's a whole guide on the different growth settings in the documentation that have much more detailed information for each setting. Next, you're probably gonna to wanna to change your plant's name. So we can just go down to the name category here. You can see that you can set your plant's name and you can also set an icon as well. Next, we're gonna take a look at the vegetable settings. So we'll go to vegetable category, and in here is all of our settings for producing vegetables. Now, again, I'm not gonna be going through all of these settings. There is a separate guide in the documentation that explains what all of these do um, and how they work. But if you want your plant to produce vegetables, you are going to need to tick on produce vegetables. If you don't want them to uh, produce vegetables, you can just untick this, and this code and system won't be used. But I'm gonna tick mine on for now. Then down here we have the vegetable resources, so we can open this up, open up each one of these entries, and now when this plant is harvested, we'll receive between two and six tomatoes and one and four tomato seeds. And this is where we would change those resources. So if I wanted this to say be uh, wood, I could change this to wood, and maybe I'd change this to uh, bush seeds instead of tomato seeds. Other settings that you might want to change are things like the vegetable growth time. This is in seconds. 
and this will mean that it will take the plant 15 seconds to grow its vegetables. Now, depending on your other growth settings, we can scroll down, you can see only produce vegetables when fully grown. This is turned on, that means that the plant will not produce vegetables until it's fully grown and then it will start producing vegetables and that's when our vegetable growth time will come in and that's how long after the plant's fully grown it will produce vegetables. You may also want to change the vegetable UI text, currently it's set to tomato but you might want to change it to your vegetable name. Then we've also got the vegetable icon, again you might want to change this to a different icon. Now we can also set growth stages for vegetables. So inside the vegetable category, if you scroll down, you'll find a stages subcategory. And in here you can set different growth stages depending on the vegetable growth value. So this allows you to switch the mesh depending on how far through your vegetables have grown. Now you can enable and disable this in uh, the uh, stages category. You can untick use vegetable growth stages and this system won't be used. But if you have it enabled, you can add your growth stages in the vegetable growth stages here. You can see that currently we've got the tomato plant set up. So this is basically doing is at 80 vegetable growth, we'll switch the mesh to this tomato plant. And that would typically be your plant mesh with some vegetables added to that mesh. Like the growth stages, you can set a skeletal mesh if you want, and you can also add effects. So you can play a sound or play a particle effect whenever this growth stage gets applied. For this video, I don't really have a vegetable um, growth stage mesh, so I'm just gonna take this off, but if you wanna use this feature, you can. If you want extra information on this, there's a whole guide in the documentation just for vegetable growth stages that you can go and take a look at. So now we've covered some of the main settings that you might wanna change when creating a new plant. I definitely recommend checking out the documentation because there are a lot more settings you can adjust to change the behavior of your plants. And in the documentation, there are guides for each one of the categories. Another thing you can do is just mouse over a setting and you'll get a tooltip just saying what that individual setting does. And that will just give you a little bit of information about how that setting works. Next, we're gonna to head to the content browser. So we'll head there now. We'll go to the player farming system folder, blueprints. And we're gonna open up the plant list. And in here, we're gonna add a new row for our new plant. So I'll click the add button. I'm gonna call my bush. And over in the row editor, we're gonna set the actor to the new uh, bush blueprint, so BP bush. Then we're gonna change the farming type to plant because this is a plant. Next, we've got ignore floor collision, which we shouldn't need to turn on for our plant, but it is useful for debugging and basically makes it so that the plant would ignore the um, landscape collision from blocking it from being placed. Next, we've got allow rotation. I'm gonna take this on. Just means that we can rotate our plant when we place it in the level. Then we've got rotation increments, which is how much we rotate uh, each time we press our rotate key. Then we've got use surface rotation. This basically means that if we were to say, look at a wall that was 90 degrees and uh, we had our plant preview out, the plant would actually rotate 90 degrees as well. For a plant, you probably wanna leave this disabled. Next, we've got the player rotation. This basically means that the plant will use the player's rotation instead of the world rotation. Then we've got use placement angle limits. This just means that we can control how steep of an angle that the plant can be placed on, and then you can control those values here. Next, we've got the plant name. So I'm just gonna set this to uh, bush. Then we can set the plant cost. So I'm gonna set this to cost um, the bush seeds resource. I'm gonna set it to cost one of those. We can set a menu icon. I don't have an icon for this particular plant, so I'm just gonna borrow the tomato plants like that. So now we need to head back to our bush blueprint, then go to class defaults, scroll up until you find the farming settings, then the farming details. And in here you can see it's currently set to tomato plant. We just need to change this to be our new bush entry. And then we can compile and save this. Now the last thing you need to do is we need to add our new bush seeds resource to our player. So we'll go to the components folder, then to player farming component, then class defaults and find the resource category and open up resources. So this is our player's starting resources. We're gonna add a new resource to it, open that bottom entry up and we'll set this to be bush space seeds and we'll set our player to start with uh, 10 of these then we'll compile and save this.
Before we play test this, we're going to check that our plant's new meshes actually have collision and you'll want to do the same for yours as well. So go to the content browser and you want to find the meshes that we're using for our new plant. So for me, that's realistic bushes, meshes, and then in here we've got the three new meshes that I'm using. So I'm going to open up the first one and the first thing we're going to do is check that it does have collision. So we'll go to show, tick on simple collision. You can see nothing's appeared here. So what we're going to do is click collision and add a simplified collision here like that. Then just save and do the same thing for each one of these meshes. So open up this one, check that it has some collision. It doesn't. So I'm just going to go to collision, add collision and then save that and then do the same thing again. So show simple collision and it doesn't have any. So we'll add some like that and then hit save. So now it's ready to test out. So we'll go to the showcase level, hit play, and I'll press tab to open up the farming menu. You can see we've got our new bush here, which I'll select. You can see our preview is working. If I hold it up in the sky, we can't place it there. And if we collide with another object, we can't place it either. So now we can place this down. As the plant begins to grow, it will actually change its meshes using our growth stage meshes. So depending on the growth value, it will switch to a new mesh as the plant gets bigger. So we'll place it down. You can see our growth effect is also working, so it's slowly getting bigger. And our mesh should change just like that. And it should change again for our next growth stage, which I just did. And then once fully grown, our vegetables will start growing as well. And if you've set up vegetable growth stages, those will now be used. And now that our plant is fully grown and the vegetables have grown as well, we can press G to harvest it. And you can see I just received wood and also the bush seeds as well. So that's it for this video. We've just been covering some of the main settings that you'll want to change when you create a new plant. There are many other settings in the system that control how the plants behave. I definitely recommend checking out the documentation as there is loads more information there about how you can change those settings and what they do. So thank you for watching and if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below.